Hello, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, I'm Constable Rob Carver, Public Information Officer with the Winnipeg Police Service. Uh, just one matter to talk about. Um, yesterday evening at about 9.10 p.m., Winnipeg Police were advised of a motor vehicle collision near Broadway and Memorial Boulevard. The initial information was that a westbound Jeep Patriot had driven through a group of protesters that were part of the Freedom Convoy at the legislative grounds. The Jeep then fled west, ultimately going down Portage Avenue where numerous witnesses reported it, traveling at high rates of speed and passing through red lights. With the assistance of the RCMP, Winnipeg Police Service officers were able to stop the vehicle in the 4800 block of Portage Avenue at approximately 1030. The lone male driver was arrested after a brief struggle. The Jeep struck four adult males in total, three sustained minor injuries that did not require medical attention, and that's actually not quite accurate. Uh, they were treated at the scene by Winnipeg Fire Paramedic Service, and the fourth was treated in hospital and released. As a result, a 42-year-old male from Headingley, Manitoba faces charges of assault with a weapon times four, dangerous operation of a conveyance caused bodily harm times two, dangerous operation of a conveyance, failed to stop after accident knowing that reckless, knowing that the driving was reckless times two, and failed to stop at the scene of an accident times two. And he is currently in custody. We haven't named the uh, individual yet because charges haven't been formally sworn to and we are obligated to not release a name until that process is complete. Um, I guess I'll take questions. Uh, Jen from Bloomberg News. Hello, Jen. Hi, I had a really difficult time hearing the audio. Um, I'm not sure I'm on but anyway, thanks for taking my question. Um, I'm just wondering if you could comment on the motivation of the driver in the Jeep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always really difficult, and I'm asked this question often, to attribute uh, a particular motivation to someone's actions. What I can tell you here is that some comments were made by the accused that sense, tends to suggest that this was not specifically about the mandates. I don't have a lot more information, but I, I think that might be important for the media and the public to understand. Now, whether or not we can we can sort of rely on those comments uh, is another question. And, and the individual was uh, was taken into custody with some resistance, so this was not someone who was compliant. Um, and the comments were blurted out. But as I I will repeat, it, it, it looks like the um, actions were not. Uh, really as a result of the mandates. Like it, um, okay, thank you. And I think that's what the I guess what can you say about intentions or the overall mood at this protest and please expect more violence? Um, we, we don't. I mean, we're, we're prepared. We're always prepared for uh, uh, the potential of violence in situations like this. We have officers at the scene and we will continue to maintain uh, WPS presence at the scene um, un until this is over. We have been in constant touch with the organizers on scene. Um, we, uh, we are not making any changes per se in terms of our uh, stance. Uh, I know that as of this morning, uh, protesters on scene have moved some trucks and that Broadway is now down to one lane uh, in either direction. Um, I think giving people in the area some more, um, some more security, limiting traffic flow. And, and we've put out on, uh, on Twitter that we're asking people to, you know, if you don't have to be in the area uh, f with a vehicle, then don't. It, it, there's a lot of stuff going on. And, and if you are part of it uh, or you have to be in the area, then expect some delays traveling in that area. But other than that, we're not, this was really a one-off, I believe. Uh, Abigail from Global. Hi there, sorry, I, I can't really hear you that well. I, I'm just wondering um, yeah. if there's any thoughts or reasoning behind not just completely closing off the street so there's no issue of uh, traffic uh, getting involved in situations like this. That's a, a, that's a really tough decision to make. First of all, there are people who, who want to be part of this 
protest and, and, and are coming to the area for that reason. And we need to facilitate their ability to peacefully protest. We also need to make sure that people can get in and out of that area and the general downtown area uh, for either regular commutes or emergency needs. And there are, there are people who want to come by and give support or, you know, media are trying to get in. So we're trying to balance those needs with, um, uh, with, with making it safe, but still allowing, um, still allowing some vehicular traffic. This is an important area of Winnipeg. And while it is the weekend, uh, it becomes heavy traffic flow during Monday to Friday during uh, commutes. We're trying to balance all of those needs, uh, not only people who live in the city, but people who are trying to, to uh, express their views and protest in the area. If this is too close to the, the motivation question, um, but I'm wondering if this person uh, had plans on coming and, and hitting a person, or is it uh, spur of the moment? Is it too soon to answer that? Uh, it, it, it is too soon. We, we don't have that answer, and in investigations like this, I mean, unless he, unless he chooses to divulge that, we may never get an answer to that. Uh, Jill from CBC. Hi there. I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit further on this. When you say it's, it's not believed to be about the mandates, is it believed that the accused was was participating in the protest? Was no, no, uh, no, absolutely not. No, the, the accused was not participating in the protest. But some comments he made uh, after his arrest suggested that. His motivation was not specifically about the underlying causes of the protest or the mandates. That's about as far as I can get. I, I, I know it's a bit obscure, but I, I, I'm really limited in, in terms of, we don't really go into, into individuals' motivation. I think it's important here to give some context that he wasn't really for or against uh, either of the general views that are sort of floating around this country. Other than that, I can't give you a lot. Have police encountered any other violence or incidents uh, similar in nature directed at or involving protesters? Well, we have not, and I can tell you that we are in uh, very regular contact with uh, with protesters and the organizers, and and everyone is being incredibly cooperative, and we've had uh, no issues uh, other than this uh, this particular one. Uh, luckily, no one was seriously hurt, but n nothing other than this. It has been uh, it has been quite well managed and uh, we'd like to thank everybody involved uh, for their continued cooperation. It has, it has really made uh, uh, the police job much easier and, and made it easier in the citizens of Winnipeg. Glenn from Sun. Um, yeah, um, Rob, can you speak to whether you, has there been any kind of effort made to much like a construction zone to set up something to slow the traffic down or has that been considered by the police we haven't made any changes to how we were um, deployed in the area since the start of this protest on friday morning we view it as an evolving situation like any protest. We will continue to not only monitor it, but work with organizers. And, and I want to stress that we are working with organizers. Uh, as I said earlier, some some trucks were repositioned uh, mid-morning today to enhance what organizers felt was the safety of, of people in the area. Um, if, if we see a situation arise or, or events arise that we need to work with them to do further enhancements, we will certainly do that and we are prepared, but that hasn't taken place. Um, I know there's a video that, that's been posted on Twitter. Um, has, have your officers had a chance to view the video yet and are you asking for any additional, you know, anyone with dashboard cam or... They, any kind of video as well. 
No, our officers had access to that uh, to that video as well as other digital information uh, uh, fairly soon after the incident. Uh, our investigation is complete. Uh, the individuals in custody were really not looking for any further information. Uh, people who were at the scene were very helpful, both um, both dash cam and cell phone videos, and uh, we'd like to thank everybody who came forward at the time. Uh, I, again, we're just thankful that that no one sustained any uh, serious or life-altering injuries, but uh, we, we're not going to need any more uh, assistance now. Uh, it's concluded. Uh, Devin from CTV. I was wondering, uh, is there any concerns with uh, seeing something like this happen again in the near future or or even the, the flip side of having some uh, friendly interactions from the protesters side of things? Well, we... <sighs> I, I think police everywhere, and specifically in Winnipeg, view these situations as potentially volatile. Um, there are strong, uh, uh, strong opinions being express, uh, expressed, uh, and there are a broad range. There's there's polarization here. Anytime you have a situation like that, there's a, there's a potential for um, for tempers to flare and 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 and, and possibly some violence. We have done everything we can. Uh, or are prepared to do at this point to ensure the safety of people in the area. Again, we're working with organizers and, and collaboratively we feel that the current situation uh, is, is balancing everyone's needs and safety. Do you have a follow-up, Devin? Yeah, I was just wondering um, if, whether it was motivated uh, by the protest or was just that it's, you know, spur of the, uh, spur of the moment incident. Is there uh, a look at increasing the police presence in the area at all? Um. Certainly, the potential is there to do that, but as I've spoken to, we are working collaboratively with people on scene and, and organizers. Uh, if if additional police resources were required to enhance the safety, uh, we'd certainly be looking at that. That's not the consensus at this point. Maggie from the Free Press. So I'm wondering if you know how fast the crow is traveling when it hits these individuals. Uh, I'm not going to speak to it, but the video is all over social media. You can take a look for yourself. It's uh, it, it it was moving at a fairly decent clip, and and it's. Uh, it's pretty miraculous that nobody sustained any uh, any serious injuries. Uh, I, I've seen the video. I haven't uh, I haven't spoken to uh, traffic collision investigators to have their assessment of the speed. Um, they're able to do that probably from the video, but it's it's moving at a pretty decent clip. And since these protesters arrived on the scene yesterday, do you have an estimate of how many people have been participating since? Um, it's it, it's been somewhat fluid. My my understanding uh, last night there was somewhere around um, 100 people on scene. Uh, some estimates of I think, if I'm correct, about 40 to 50 vehicles. Uh, that was increasing this morning as we would expect uh, during daylight hours. More people coming into the area. Some more vehicles. Uh, again, I would like to say that everyone has been. Um, uh, very peaceful, very cooperative with us, uh, very prepared to engage in dialogue with our officers. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, I'm looking at some news feeds from across the country, uh, you know, it's Winnipeg and it's lots of blowing snow and it's pretty chilly out there still. I think that affects people's inclination to come out and, uh, and stay outside, uh, but we'll have to see. Uh, Liza from Radio Canada. Yeah, the question will be, uh, you say you're working with the organizer. For those kinds of things uh, around the village, uh, do you know if uh, protesters are planning to leave any time soon? Uh, we haven't been given any indication when uh, the protesters are planning to leave or if they're planning to leave. Uh, the current situation from our standpoint is quite stable and, and that's not first and foremost on our mind. Uh, unlike some other cities, um, this is, uh, uh, everyone is cooperating well and uh, uh, we're not 
looking at at some sort of end is how we can uh, or, or an end date as to when things will wrap up we just want to make sure everyone is safe while it's ongoing and other than this incident uh which we which we believe is one off uh, we hope to be able to continue with the level of safety we've seen do you have a follow-up well, we, we have no plans to change uh, our, our deployment model at this point uh, other than last night. Uh, and, and I think anytime you've got people on streets and, and, uh, and vehicles, uh, there is a potential. We can't, we, we can't block off roads in the downtown area to make sure that people who are walking to and from this area are safe. Uh, the protesters understand, and, and I think if you see the video, are, are cognizant of the fact that they're on roadways, that, uh, that even if we blocked off, you know, even if Broadway was blocked off, there are cross streets uh, that, that have the potential for, um, you know, vehicular pedestrian interactions. Uh, we don't see that, that anything, any changes to our model uh, would enhance anyone's safety. Uh, Rob from Canadian Press. Up there. Uh, does anyone else have any uh, further questions? Well, if that's it. Uh, oh. uh, here from CTV, I was just wondering, do we know if uh, this person had committed a crime earlier in the day and was fleeing, or did they have any criminal history at all? As far as I'm aware, the person had no uh, no previous police involvement, and this was not related to any other criminal offense. Nope. Rob, can you say if if this incident um, was believed to be targeted or intentional against the protesters? Um, it does appear that way. Yes. Uh, it, we know that at least one of the uh, of the victims was wearing a high vis vest. Um, uh, if you watch the video uh, on social media, you can see that uh, vehicles are are moving through the area at a safe pace. Uh, protesters are aware of of the vehicles. Um, they're facilitating the passing of the vehicles, and this vehicle um, is is on Broadway westbound. And appears to um, accelerate from the uh, from the pedestrian crosswalk just east of there. Um, I, I can't speculate other than what I've seen in the video and what investigators have told me, but it certainly does look like there was some intention here. Right now, you mentioned that there have been no other incidents that I spoke with a woman this morning uh, said she was harassed by an anti-vaxxer. Outside near the protest uh, yesterday afternoon, are you aware of that incident? Have there been any reports? So I'm not, but as I said earlier, this is an extremely polarizing um, situation. There are very divergent views, not only here, but across the country, beyond that. And I, 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 I'm not sure what the definition of harassment is, but people with strongly held beliefs get pretty passionate about those beliefs and those sorts of interactions really don't become police matters unless they become criminal so if you're if you know if you're on one side of the fence or the other i mean everybody needs to be reminded except they've been doing this well these are strongly held and impassioned views and they're going to be expressed with a lot of passion so I, I I'm not sure what the definition of harassment is and it, but that's the nature of, of this political discourse um, Rob, Glenn Dawkins from the Sun. Um, anyone driving through the area would you have any words of advice for them if they're being held up by the protest or if they're getting a little hot under the collar what would your words to them be well, Glenn, we put out on, on Twitter today a reminder that, you know, it, it, really, if you don't need to be in that area, then, then pick another route to travel through. Uh, you know, we've got a, we've got a number of, of protesters and, and, and vehicles slowing traffic. If, if you don't need to take that route, then find a different route. If you have to take the route, 
or you're in the area because of your um, uh, beliefs, then be prepared to be delayed. And uh, there's no sense getting uh, short-tempered about it. it. It traffic will be delayed, and and if it's ongoing past the weekend and into a, a Monday morning commute, there will continue to be delays. Um, I'd like to stress that. Um, uh, delays are something that, that anybody in an urban center uh, has been used to over over the last decade in terms of political concerns and, and I'd like to make sure that everyone understands that it's a delay is a small inconvenience. We haven't shut down parts of, of, of downtown. We haven't limited traffic. We haven't eliminated traffic flow. And, and I, again, I'd like to thank everybody involved for their cooperation. Um, uh, delays are going to be expected, and uh, and 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 patience are going to be required. Anything further from uh, any reporter? Thank you. Thank you very much.